So uh, who was here, by the way, for the previous presentation? A few of you. So there's a couple of concepts discussed about in a building environment, how you can bring uh, more sustainable solutions, improve uh, space optimization, increase the service levels for the staff, and uh, overall improve staff effectiveness. So today, the topic I'm going to talk about is how do you improve service levels? So I'm going to use the color codes which were used before on how do you improve the service levels in retail using light as an infrastructure. Uh, thanks for the introduction, so I'll not introduce more about myself. What I'll do, however, is uh, briefly introduce Philips Lighting. Philips Lighting, uh, who knows about Philips Lighting? Just maybe I ask. It's a 120-year-old company, uh, first company to ship the first lamp in the world. So a lot of history in lighting. It's a standalone company now. A lot of people maybe don't know about it. Philips used to be a conglomerate of many companies. And now it's split into many different companies, and lighting is one of them. It's the youngest uh, listed company in Amsterdam Stock Exchange and the oldest lighting company. We are about 7.5 billion euro business, 30,000 uh, plus employees. A uh, large part of our business is uh, professional lighting. That's where I work. It's about uh, three-fourths of our business. We are number one in LED. Close to 50% of our business is LED-based lighting. And uh, we are also number one in the connected lighting. What we sell typically is what you see goes into your lamps inside the house. We, it's called a bulb. We call it a lamp. But essentially, that's a large part of our business. Uh, we also sell a lot of these fully finished fixtures. We call them luminaires. So the, what you see here right above is called a fixture. And there's an emerging business in Philips, which is essentially connecting all these light points and sensors around it. That's called systems and services. That's the business where I am. And within that business, we have four kind of thrusts, homes, uh, retail, hospitality, office industry, and uh, municipalities. We call it public, but it's municipal uh, customers. So I had the retail hospitality business, essentially in the system and services business. That's close to 10% of our total revenue. So it's a real business, not just an experiment within Philips. We have, a, we have a business plan and a strategy behind it. Within retail and hospitality, we look at how we can uh, make buildings more efficient, give more operational control over your building. For example, uh, Burj Khalifa, probably you're familiar with, is the tallest building in the world yet. And uh, we control all the lighting points from one head and software for the whole building. Uh, essentially, it's one uh, entire data backbone which controls, I think, hundreds plus of floors of 500, 600 meters square of uh, 500 to 600 meters tall building. We also do a lot of shopping malls globally. Uh, there we are looking at how can we use lighting as an asset to make uh, the facade of the shopping mall as a media asset where you can sell media to media companies. Instead of just beautifying, can you also generate revenue from your building? We also do a lot of fashion stores. We do a lot of retail stores, uh, food and large retail stores globally. And uh, last but not the least, we are looking at a new technology, which is uh, kind of very old when it comes from technology perspective. From a business perspective, it's pretty young in Philips, which is about two years old, I would say. And that's called the Indo-Positioning Program. And I'm going to focus only on the Indo-Positioning Program. There's a lot that we do in the other area that need, deserves, I think, a separate presentation, so I'll just pick one of them. Uh, before uh, starting the Indo Positioning Program, we said uh, what really we are trying to do is give a positioning platform in retail for shoppers. In the past, that was done by Wi-Fi technology, Bluetooth technology, Earth magnetic field, and also sensors inside the phone. So if you're looking at building kind of an indoor GPS to draw in metaphor here, uh, we need to understand how shoppers buy. So the first question we ask is, you know, how the retail would look like, given that more and more people buy online, and there are a lot of things happening in the retail environment. So we had to step a bit beyond our traditional infrastructure business to try to understand the shopper business, to understand really what's going on in retail. We don't think we have the, all the answers of retail. I think a lot of retailers themselves don't have the answers themselves. That's why you see a lot of retailers even go bankrupt today at a speed which hasn't been seen in the last so many years. What we do see, there are a couple of trends which are very relevant for us. There are three trends that we see are extremely important. One is a technology trend, which is IoT, more and more connected devices. We, you know, everybody kind of says close to 50 billion devices, close to 5 billion smartphones by 2025. So people connected to devices and places going forward will just proliferate. Uh, McKinsey did an interesting study and found retail is among the top three areas where retail will, IoT will have the maximum impact. And uh, within retail, it will be predominantly in the area of location-based promotions. It will be in the area of uh, checkout. Uh, it will be in the area of layout optimization and improving maintenance of the stores. Second uh, is a demographic trend. Essentially, uh, 
the millennial generation is kind of fundamentally changing how they demand services from retail. This is a generation which was born after 1980. Uh, people draw the line always in 1980, 81, but let's say from 1980. This is a generation which has been always uh, born in a democracy. It's not so many wars typically, but uh, having access to internet, having access to information, and typically everybody spends 10% of their money on a smartphone or applications uh, which they buy through their mobile phones. So very, very tech savvy or uh, demographic, which is shaping the future of retail. Typically, the range is anywhere between 20 to 50 percent. If you look at, you know, India would be probably even 50 percent. Europe is 25 percent. U.S. is about one third. Sustainability is uh, another big area which continues as people become more and more aware of information. They put more pressure on retailers to be more sustainable, communicate their sustainability policy. Uh, one thing we believe in lighting we can do is pretty quickly bring 50 percent energy efficiency gain. Uh, typically, lighting is 50 percent of the electricity cost in a in a retail store varies from 20 to 50 percent, I would say, depending on kind of the store or a hotel. And uh, just by switching to LED and maybe a bit of controls, you can save up to 50 percent of uh, electricity. What I would like to focus is really in the connected millennials and how they are shaping the future of retail. What we believe is happening is the old-fashioned model of retail where you picked your car and your bag, you went to store, bought your goods and went back home, and retailer was happy you did that. They counted how many of you were there and they open new stores or they increase their merchandise. That was a very old-fashioned traditional model of how people bought goods. We believe that's getting very outdated. So if you're just putting camera at the entrance of your store trying to count people, that's pretty old-fashioned nowadays to really see how shoppers buy. Because the shopper journey is very convoluted. It starts way early just by people scanning for information. How many people here, just by a show of hand, scan for their products well in advance before they go and shop anything on Google or any other platform? pretty large percentage. As per Deloitte, about 60-65% 60, 60, of the sales in UK is influenced by any kind of digital uh, device, either it's a phone or a computer or an iPad, where people are looking for information before they go and buy anything. So you know, that kind of raises the question what the future of store would look like. Right? We believe a store could be a pickup point, store could be an experience center, a store could be a showroom, uh, or store may not be needed. Or store could be just your phone. So what is the meaning of a store is changing fundamentally. We believe, however, for us it's very important to know what's happening still in the physical store. Because we are an infrastructure provider, so we kind of said what happens really to the physical store. In the physical store, we think there are three things that's going to happen. The first thing, the store will become more fuzzy, it'll become more personal, and it'll become more digital. I just picked some examples uh, by talking to some head of designs in uh, different companies. When we talk about store getting fuzzy, this is a great example of uh, John Lewis in London. They used to sell a lot of couches, very popular couches in UK, and they suddenly saw their uh, sales started to decline over the last three, four years. Pretty steep decline. They say, why it's happening? Because people are very impatient to go to a store and figure out how this couch will look like in the house, and they buy, and then they don't know whether they bought the right thing, and then they have to send it back. It's a big hassle for them to contextualize what this uh, couch is going to look like inside the house. So what they did, they created, uh, they first of all, they cut down the floor space to half. They put these augmented reality tables whereby you can put the couch you like next to the photographs of your house and pick hundreds of different kinds of different fabrics and see how it looked like in your home. So what they moved from, it's a typical old-fashioned uh, couch selling business model to a virtual reality or augmented reality based uh, online model within the store. And they call it the Sofa Studio. The sales have gone up since then. They're rolling it out across John Lewis. A great example of uh, stores getting more personalized. Uh, how many of you see you can buy fresh food, freshly cooked pizza, or freshly cooked salad inside a grocery store. So a few hands go up. I think this is proliferating. I see more and more. I travel 40% of my time outside Netherlands. I live in Netherlands, but I'm in the US, in China, India, Middle East. I'm traveling a lot, and I see in many places now, you start to get freshly cooked food inside the, inside the grocery stores. And uh, what I also saw, there are farmers coming. In the past, I used to buy from a farmer, and then just sell uh, stuff from them, you know, and pack them in a packet and sell it. But now what retailers are doing, they're bringing farmers to the store and say, can you actually draw the old-fashioned, fresh-from-the-farm experience inside the store? So people are rethinking how they can personalize and make the stores more interesting for shoppers to come there. Also, we see these things probably you see very often, uh, self-scanning through a phone or through a barcode scanner, endless aisles. So if you don't find the products you get in the store, you can also just click buy it over there online and then they'll deliver it to your home. 
you see click and collect, uh, you also see self checkout. And you can check out you know, right at the counter, or sometimes we also see in future you can check out right at the location where you buy the product. So that's also going to happen more and more in future. So indeed, so stores getting more fuzzy, more personal and digital. Then the question comes, OK, what is Philips Indo positioning all about? What problem are you really trying to solve? So we said we are looking at the area of making the mobile experience, since we can give a very accurate location inside the store. Why don't we make the mobile experience of a shopper seamless inside the store? So from research, we know about 60 or percent of the sales are happening by people looking for information on the phone. We know eight out of 10 uh, shoppers use phone in some form or the other inside the store. We also, from research, know a lot of them are looking for information on their mobile to look for information rather than looking for staff, especially the millennials. We also know that uh, a large percent of them would be very happy to find information or promotion or assistance based on where they are inside the store, especially when they're struggling inside the store. So that's what people are looking for. However, you know, still sales are happening in the store, right? So, but the store itself is a black box. Typically, if you go online, you go to Amazon, for example, who shops on Amazon? You know, you can see great product combinations. You can see great uh, navigation. You can find reviews. You can get so much information and promotions and uh, great experience online, which when you go to a store, you don't get it, right? And a lot of this has been enabled online through cloud computing, so you don't need to be only Amazon. You could be any mom and pop uh, store, and you go online, and you can provide the same experience. So that's happening because of a lot of modern technologies like cloud computing. But when you go to a physical store, it's kind of cloudy, I say. You, know, you don't know what's really going on till such time somebody walks in and gets out from your store. What happened inside, when they are in the store, it's anybody's guess. Yeah, and then everybody is kind of guessing, really. I talk to a lot of store designers, innovation managers. They really don't know what accurately is happening in the store. One example where we saw there's a, there's a real impact on revenue is uh, finding the products, finding products or promotion, for instance. And we see close to 7% people who cannot find products. They just abandon sale and leave. Another 9% just go to another store. And the other half look for some kind of assistance. Some keep looking and stay frustrated. And you don't want your shoppers to go through this experience, especially because they're getting fabulous experience online. So what we try to do here is we said, why this is happening? Can we solve some of this? We know people have a mobile. We know they have retailer apps. Can we give them location inside the store? And this is not a new concept. Uh, providing location in the store has been tried by many retailers for the last five to six years. The real issue is that they've used technologies such as Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, couple of more technologies like sensors inside your phone. But they can never get eye level accuracy. What happens is uh, these technologies are radio frequency based. And when you are walking through the store, you might be sent to another aisle. And when you want to look into certain direction, actually the arrow will point you in some other direction because these are radio frequency based technologies. And the accuracy varies anywhere between four to five meters. So retailers have been struggling in a long time trying to find an accurate solution. We think at Philips, we have a solution like that. Interestingly, Philips had patents in uh, how to use light to provide location or provide any sort of information on camera-based uh, device. It could be phone or any other device for the last 10 years or 15 years. So we've been having patents for many years, but we never commercialize. This IoT conference is a lot about talking about creating business value. So I can just talk about you know, a big technology company having a lot of patents, trying to find business value. Finally, I think we kind of hit the sweet spot. So let me just explain you very briefly what that technology is, and then I'll talk about business value after that. So what do you see here? You see, uh, as I said, these are lighting fixtures, or luminaires, as we call them, above you. What happens is, I guess all of you have your smartphones in your hand. What typically you'll do, I don't have mine. Mine is in my bag. When you open your smartphone, you'll open, uh, you'll open your uh, selfie camera. For example, you put in a selfie mode. And you can start seeing the luminaires. You start seeing the light. So we can see each light point on your camera. I'm just trying to explain the technology. Right? And if you see two, then we can tell you where you are in between the two. And how it happens is we flicker each of the light point with a different code. And you can't see that code because the flicker rate is so fast that you can't, uh, you can't even observe from a naked eye. And we test it on cats and dogs and migrant patients. Nobody gets affected. So, so it's quite safe in that sense. Uh, so with the flickering of this luminaire, for example, with the code A, and that one with the code B, 
we can accurately tell you up to 30 centimeter accuracy where you are. And certain, since it's a line of sight, we can also tell you where you are oriented. Are you looking towards left or looking towards right? So that's actually very powerful for retailers because they can send their shoppers to a particular aisle and tell them this is where you're looking at and this is where they're really looking at. So that's actually the power of the technology and how it kind of works, I already explained. Each luminary emits a code. On your mobile app, we provide you a software development kit. That kits this into your shopping app. Uh, let's say Coop is a big retailer in Sweden. Is Coop a big retailer? So imagine you have a Coop app and you open the Coop app. It has our software inside that app, which gets published to the uh, Apple Store and you can download it. In that app, when you open the app, the software of Philips automatically talks to the APIs of the camera of smartphone. You would not even know as a shopper what's going behind it, but it automatically opens your front-facing camera and it starts reading codes from the luminaire. And what we do to ensure that the, the system is secure and the retailers are paying us money, we have hooked that application to our cloud infrastructure. So every time you walk into a store as a shopper, you open the app, we locate through Apple Location Library where you are, geographically, which city, which location, and we check whether the retailer is paying their fees, for example, and it's all safe, then it's okay, and then we publish uh, what we say a fixture map, which goes into your app, and from that app, you can, you're by yourself. You can just start navigating inside the store. A lot of people ask me about battery life as well. Typically, what we realize, the performance is as good or even better compared to your Google Maps or other maps that you use outside in the outdoor environment. Having said that, you typically we don't see shoppers using their phone all the time to navigate in the whole store for three hours. Typically, they need to look for some information. They'll use the service, switch it off, and put it back into the pocket. So that's essentially how the architecture works. Uh, the important thing is you just don't want people to have a map and a dot. You need to add more information. You need to add more content. So that typically is the responsibility of the retailer. They provide uh, uh, services, for example, location-based location, uh, location -based promotions, uh, product information, maps, and all that sits with the retailer. We don't, uh, we don't provide that directly through our cloud. We provide it through our partners or retailers have it themselves. So that's kind of the overarching architecture. We also will add Bluetooth beacon going forward because we know when people have the phone in the pocket, and if you want to send uh, in-pocket notification, you need to do it only through a Bluetooth kind of technology. You can't do it through light. So for navigation, we'll use light, which gives you very good accuracy. For other use cases, like in-pocket notification, or in areas where there is no light, you still want some level of navigation, we'll use Bluetooth technology as a complementary technology, but not the core technology. So that's kind of how the technology works. Uh, I think benefits I already talked through when I, when I mentioned. One example uh, which I'd like to share, at the moment we're talking to about 10 to 15 large retailers globally, and we have pilots in five to six globally. We can't talk about the names because we are under NDA with them. One retailer we can definitely talk about, and we have done quite some joint conferences with them, is one of the largest retailers in Europe, Carrefour. Uh, this is the first supermarket which went live last year in summer, where uh, we took a biggest supermarket in Lille, which is kind of the innovation hub for retail in, in Europe at least. And there we took an 8,000 meter square uh, supermarket. There we installed our lighting system. And uh, essentially what Carrefour was looking for, uh, every week Carrefour sends close to 200 to 300 promotions in a printed booklet to homes in Lille. And uh, people typically throw these booklets into garbage bin. Who does it here? I don't even pick them up, you know. I, I hope my neighbors pick them up and throw it because sometimes there are too many. Uh, but I do it anyways, I'm a good citizen. Uh, so Carrefour also was struggling with that. They spent so much money on print, they spent so much money on promotions, but this giant supermarket, people can't find it. People don't have the habit to take this printed brochure and walk into the store. So they wanted to bring it all online onto the app. It's called the Kuu app. You can actually download it. And if you happen to be in Lille, you can go to this big supermarket and you can try out the application. It's live and uh, shoppers are downloading and uh, they really like that they can accurately find the promotions. What they do essentially is uh, they go to the Ku app, they click the button where uh, the promotions are, they pick the catalog. So if you're a mama, you want to go and buy you know, goods for home like a kettle or, uh, or something else or a mixer. You click what the promotion is, and then our systems accurately navigates you to the, uh, to the aisle and to the product. This actually, we did a demonstration live on CNN. So we have a video where there was a reporter live testing this technology. So it's, we, have, we have proven that the technology works. 
and works well. We're trying to work with our customers to make the maps look a bit more, bit more interesting, add more features like 3D, augmented reality, et cetera, that'll come in future. So that's kind of a successful experiment we did with Kafur. As I mentioned, we are talking to a lot of retailers. And uh, very quickly, when we do these co-creation workshops, we bump into a very large number of use cases. Typically, these use cases are in the area of shopper convenience, help people find products or find a staff. So a lot of it is around the convenience of the shopper. A lot is about shopper engagement. Can we give them promotion? Can we do gamification? You know, many times I see moms walking with their kids, and the kids are really pestering them all the time. And I also see kids now start to carry smartphone, either it's their own or from their parents. Uh, this kind of an app can help in gamification. You get the kid to play treasure hunt inside the store while you're doing your shopping. You know, you can do some of these use cases, and retailers want to try out these things to get more drama, and more excitement inside the store. A lot of retailers, uh, especially very large DIY stores, are looking at staff efficiency because there are hundreds of SKUs, and they want to find optimal route to st st stock up their uh, missing items or tell their staff to find a shopper because uh, they also want to increase productivity from everyday declining sales per square meter. They want to drive more and more staff effectiveness. So that's another use case we run into. A lot of retailers want to do data analytics, not at individual level, but at a grouping level. For example, how many people are walking in which area? Try to get timestamps, time to get more accurate heat maps. Try to understand uh, in-app uh, behavior of shoppers, what they're searching, what they're not searching, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of use cases are there. One more use case uh, that retailers are very interested about is using all this information, using the power of the technology to talk in, uh, to CPG companies like Unilever's, uh, Procter & Gamble's of the world, Coca-Cola of the world, trying to see if they can sell this as a service to them as well. So that if, for example, in certain part of the store, Coca-Cola will set at a certain premium, could you charge that premium, a little bit of that premium from the CPG company as a retailer? So they're looking at creating a market space as well trying to sell this location-based promotions as a service to CPG companies. So these are kind of areas where we see making apps more location-aware could open a whole range of use cases. As Philips, we are always a bit uh, critical about ourselves, our innovation, to make it very sharp and uh, rock solid. So we said we are going to do research ourselves. We are an infrastructure company, but we'll uh, dare to go and understand what shoppers are doing today and trying to bring that knowledge into our, uh, in our solution. So what we did, we did an online survey with about 3,000 uh, shoppers. We also did walk-along with shoppers, and we did in-depth interviews, trying to understand how they use apps, what they like about it, and if you give them location-aware app, the same app, would it drive more usage? So we kind of have some data from that, which is quite promising. First thing, what we realized that uh, shoppers, typically in a large food store or a large DIY store, they're happy to receive uh, information around products, uh, happy to find promotions around products. They're happy to find uh, a staff member who can help them. And a lot about price. Can they find is there something on discount, something on uh, something which they can secure a good deal? And the numbers are pretty promising. If you see, in terms of appeal, we are talking about 70 to 80 percent of shoppers who really like that as a feature. Uh, then we did another test uh, with the same set of shoppers. What we realize in uh, US, Netherlands, and France, typically, if you see in food and DIY, typically in food, there's a larger usage of apps, mobile apps. In DIY, it's uh, rather low. And uh, in the US, it's much higher than in Europe. So you see US, almost 50% users are using apps of any form. Then in Europe, Europe is under 30%. Then we said, if you make these app location aware, given these whole range of services that you can get, uh, you see the intended usage doubles up almost in uh, DIY and food across the countries. So our, our kind of uh, pitch to retailers is if you have an app and if you have a mobile marketing program and you want to make your mobile experience seamless, make it location aware. And you've been dying to find a look really accurate system and we have one using light. The good news about light is if you move, as I said, to an energy efficient light from conventional light, I think this is not LED, you move to an LED light, you automatically get 50% electricity saving, which gives you two to three years payback period. So with the same infrastructure, you get two benefits, which I think is uh, quite a promising offer for the customer. Having said that, uh, we said we need to go further deep and try to make the experience as frictionless as possible, even for retailers, to adopt this technology. And that, I think, is an important thing in IoT world, is that you can't do it all by yourself. You need to partner. 
right? So the first thing we did is we start to look for partners where we can bring different pieces that we don't build as Philips and bring it into the offer. Second we thing we did, I'm going to talk about in a minute. Second thing we did, we made a value model for retailers where they can actually quantify the benefit of uh, an app which is location aware versus not location aware. So we build a whole value model which they can use to calculate per store how much value they generate from investment in this technology. Last but not the least, we're building analytics as well to help retailers see based on timestamps and heat maps where people are walking, what they're doing, where they're using this technology, where they're not using it. So it gives them a bit more science around what's going on in this black box of retail. Very quickly about partnership. I'm just talking about one which is announced. There are many more we are talking about. Uh, there's a company in the US called IL411. What they do, they do product mapping. So they take all unstructured data about products from a retailer. They put it into their own database. And then they give you a very simple, elegant software which sits into your app. It's not too heavy. And they can synchronize with their cloud. And they build a lot of feature functionality on what people type when they type an Apple in the US, what they mean versus what they mean, for example, in Sweden. So they have built these behavior analytics in their software so that you immediately find amongst millions of SKUs what you're looking for. We are also talking to another company which does maps, very good quality maps, 3D and 2D maps. And we'll also offer that as part of a service. We are also talking to companies which do uh, mobile payments. So a perfect journey for you would be, I am here, can I locate my product? Can I scan my product? And I can I pay and get out? So we can close that journey by adding mobile scanning to the mobile app. So we are working with partners in this industry to bring this all together for, uh, for our retail customers. I talked about the value model. It's just a screenshot. Uh, there's some details here about Carrefour, which probably you can't read carefully. That's the way we want to keep it. Uh, some of this is confidential, uh, so it, it, I'm not going to share all the details. But you see here a couple of things about retailers are concerned about missed sales. So can they quantify versus you know a store where there was no technology and an app with location versus when there was one. So that's one use case. Staff productivity is another use case. And a couple of other ones uh, which we, we want to bring and quantify with retailers. I talked about analytics, trying to uh, remember in the beginning I said the store is very cloudy. So we're trying to see can using the same technology can we uh, fix that. So actually these are uh, real time heat maps. So you can see where shoppers are, where they're using the, the app, where they're not using the app. From that, uh, if you zoom in, you can get very accurate timestamps during the day when people are walking in, what they're doing inside the store. You can see, maybe it's not that visible, you can see that in the pharmacy area the app usage was higher. 12 times or higher than in some other area. So you can see, OK, if this is where people are spending most of the time. And if these, these areas like pharmacy is really sitting far behind, if people are really coming to your store for pharmacy, why don't you bring it a bit in the front? Or maybe bring it in the end. A lot of retailers want their shoppers to get lost. So depending on your strategy, is it convenience or is it experience, you can decide where to position these uh, different uh, aisles. So I, I hope I gave you a bit of an idea of what we're doing in the positioning program. Now the question comes, OK, where is it all heading? Uh, some research says that number of venues or number of installations globally will just grow by 20 30% on an annual basis for interlocation technologies. Uh, the largest would be in food and DIY, electronics, fashion, restaurants, and shopping malls. And I think in Philips, we have a good solution where we can uh, bring a very accurate location infrastructure. Uh, location infrastructure, as I said, is not sufficient. Uh, research says. Location infrastructure will be close to a billion business going forward. Uh, that's quite an attractive space for us. But imagine the value it will create for retailers in terms of couponing, giving mobile search functionalities, giving in-store analytics, giving uh, in-application uh, experience. So we see that those things will be enabled once the retailers have invested in location technology. And uh, one of us is uh, one of our technology is Philips Indoor Positioning Technology. Just to summarize for everybody, we believe physical store is here to stay. 90% of sales will still happen in, uh, in the physical store. Uh, stores will get more fuzzy, more personal, more digital. Uh, I think stores are not disappearing. They're just going to change. Uh, they can benefit from new technologies, a lot of IoT technologies. Philips has one of them, which is uh, in the area of indoor location. There are many other ways to engage your shoppers. Loyalty program, for example, uh, improving your merchandise. There are many ways to engage with your shoppers, but definitely providing location-aware app is a, is a fabulous way to, to do uh, in mobile, uh, let's say, engagement with your shoppers in the store. LED lighting provides a very accurate system, which is accurate in uh, location, but also accurate in orientation. 
So it's something worth considering. There are hundreds of use cases you can go for. Sometimes it's overwhelming and say, oh, I can do all this. Then somebody says, okay, I don't want to do anything because I can do so many things. So what we do with customers is pick one and mature that use case, get their staff and uh, shoppers used to that particular application, and then add more feature functionality. So that's kind of how we're building the program. And there's huge value, uh, numbers say there's huge value going forward in, uh, in this space. So we are quite excited about it. So that's, in, in, uh, in nutshell, the summary of uh, my presentation. You might be wondering what's our broader uh, vision going forward. The presenter before from Ericsson, she was talking about workspace optimization. So in retail, the idea is, again, to look at lighting as a dense grid uh, in the ceiling, where we can hook a lot of sensors. We can assign ID to each luminaire and pull, uh, pull the whole IP backbone, either wired or wireless, behind the infrastructure to collect sensory information and provide data and services to customers to optimize the space, increase the service level, drive staff productivity. So that's kind of our IoT vision in, uh, in retail going forward. With that, I would like to conclude my presentation. I hope uh, you enjoyed it. Thank you. OK, so I guess tons of questions. Who want to start? Um. I come from uh, Lund University. Uh, one of the questions is, uh, how, how dependent are you with pushing this infrastructure in co um, cooperating with construction uh, companies and uh, systems integrators? Is that an important partner, or can this infrastructure be treated alone and work directly with retailers? Yeah, so very good question, actually. Typically, retailers have their own construction departments where they have design, real estate, engineering. So it's rather easy because you go straight to them and they know things pretty well. Uh, so in terms of construction industry, we don't go through many intermediaries. And the good thing is once you install the Luminaire, all you need to do is commission the store. And for that, we have a mobile app with which we send a guy to commission it. And it doesn't take more than two to three hours uh, to commission the whole store, typically. And we don't need system integrators to do that. Once it's commissioned, our cloud architecture starts to work and we manage it ourselves. So we don't need necessarily system integrators. What we need is mobile experience integrators, whereby there are not many good mobile app development companies for retailers. Retailers typically do it in-house or they outsource, but we typically see the experience is very bad. Uh, that's where I think uh, most of the value is, not so much in uh, integrating a location technology. Okay. So if I understand you right, the dislocation takes place when the user, the customer, has the phone out and in the hand. What proportion, it sounds like quite seldom, what proportion of time is the user actually, what proportion of the time when the user is in the shop can you actually track the location? Yeah, good question. So I think uh, I shared some data about US, France, and uh, Netherlands. We know about 50% people use these apps when they're in the store. And yeah, about... But, correct. Not all the time. Not all the time. Actually, we probably we don't need that either. Right? If you just want to use technology to find information and solve the problem of consumer, and that could happen in 30 seconds, that's good enough. I think what we are trying to do is give a scalable, you know, pretty low-cost infrastructure using light, which offers you location. We don't say that you keep using the phone all the time in the store because you want to buy stuff and not stay in your phone. So we just want to use it as you know for a few seconds. You use it, you find your way, and then that's it. However, if your kids want to play inside the store and do a treasure hunt, they will be using it all the time. So it really depends on the use case. Does it answer your question? Thanks for the good presentation, um, Tepa from uh, Wirepass. I think the idea of lighting providing the infrastructure for free is, is a very nice. How about in situations where the property is owned by a different company than the shop leasing the, 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 the premises, right. as well as if they happen to have replaced for the LEDs already. So it's maybe a more, more difficult sales. Do you, do you see technologies that you would use this platform using maybe something else than lighting for the same purpose? Very good question. So you're talking about areas of friction in the value chain. The system, the way it's developed, the luminaire itself doesn't have to be like I mentioned in this vision that you can connect everything through an IP backbone, but the location technology that I talked about doesn't have to be connected through an IP backbone. So what you just need to do is buy these luminaires, and they have a special electronics inside, which we switch on from the factory. All you need to do is plug it in, 
and that's it. And that could be done by an installer, by a construction company, or by an end user. What happens many times is the, the franchise owner or the, the property owner, they are dis different decision makers than the operators. And we need to go sell to those decision makers. The good news about Philips is we have been selling lamps and lighting fixtures through so many channels that we have those relationships in most of the markets. So depending on the use case, we can fulfill it, uh, typically. That should be the way forward. Uh, <clears throat> I just had another thought about what you said over there. Uh, about um, if we knew more about the customers even when they don't have the phone switched on or uh, out of the pocket. And I think it's a good use case. And uh, the question is, uh, this brings it into the ecology of sensors. Mm -hmm. Maybe not only the, the light as it is and the camera, but it can be other things that you need to combine. Mm -hmm. But for sure, if you, you talk about sending stuff where it's needed, and if you see a big group of uh, customers in one place, maybe you need to send staff there. It can be a line of people waiting for service or whatever. It, it can also be sending advertisement mm -hmm. when you're passing by a certain point. Correct. Did you know that uh, you have a grocery for sale here or whatever? So Correct. I think for sure the combination of this together with other sensors. But the question is which sensors? Yeah. I know there is a, a company down here that I think is called ModCam. They have some mm -hmm. ideas in this field uh, by integrating uh, um, some kind of camera sensor. Mm -hmm. um, so what we I mentioned very briefly was Bluetooth. That's the first one which we embraced. And we realized that with Bluetooth technology, iBeacon technology or any other Bluetooth technology, you could amount of time uh, pretty much. Three minutes. All right. I'll just quickly answer your question. So with Bluetooth technology, you can cover quite some use cases. You can give in-pocket notification. You can do uh, shopper tracking. You can do a quite a few things using Bluetooth technology. What is very important is that the shoppers buy into the idea of using your mobile app. And they opt in to be sent promotions or to be tracked. And that is a responsibility of a retailer. I think that's where they need to market. And I think more and more world wants to share information to get back promotions and new ideas and inspiration. And it doesn't have to be that you're standing in a queue and you don't want to be annoyed that somebody keeps sending you an alert while you're standing next to a, a kid who's 16 years old and he really wants all the alerts. So you need to separate the two consumers as well. So the, re the identity management of shopper and the shopper information sits with the retailer. It's their data and they manage that uh, relationship. Once you opt in with Bluetooth technology, you can do both. You can identify who you are, what your profile is, what your preferences are, and based on that, you can get a, a, a notification. It doesn't have to come from light. It'll come from your Wi-Fi network. So in that sense, quite, quite scalable, quite flexible. What we're also looking at is in future is see if can we combine data with RFID information. So imagine you have a, a big RFID scanner and multiple of them inside stores, and you can accurately locate where the products are, dynamically locate where the products are. Because products, once you put them on the shelf, they have their own legs and start walking. But with RFID technology, especially in fashion industry, most of the products have RFIDs inside. You could accurately locate where things are. With that, you can give very dynamic information on where you are, where the product is, is it available, and give you an, uh, give you an alert. So we are also looking at those use cases. Can we combine the data from two sides to give more, uh, more uh, enjoyable experience to the shoppers? We are. We are partnering with companies uh, a lot. I can't take names because they are under NDAs, but we are talking to, I can tell you which area we are innovating. So this is so exciting. I give you one more minute, one last question, very <laughs> quick, okay? Thank sure. I can spend another 20 minutes, but she would not allow me. <laughs> and the lunch is waiting for you, so let's keep it last indeed. As an old retailer, I uh, try, always try to push things into the, uh, into the way of uh, the customer uh, for them not to miss it. Isn't it very time-consuming time uh, to redraw the map every time you, you uh, place the wares? at different places in the store. You mean uh, product maps, where the products yes. are in the map? Yes. Okay. Because the map of the store typically doesn't change dramatically, but the product location changes quite a bit. Yeah. It depends per geography as well. In the US, we see they change much more than in Europe. Europe, they like to keep it more static. But the products itself, the inventory information keeps changing. So what happens, uh, we studied that field quite a bit now. Uh, what retailers do, they, every week, they update this information using some form of uh, register or some form of scanning technology or RFID technology. And that register is then shared with our partner 
There's, there are many more companies, but this is one of the partner. That information is then put into a, a cloud. So they do it every week. It's a bit of a labor work. And then that cloud is ready to serve the apps. So that's what happens in technical, uh, technically on a weekly basis. What we see in the example I gave with RFID technology, so we are talking to companies who do this. They will collect all this information and give you 24-7 where the products are. And that will that'll solve some of those issues as well going forward. That's a huge area of friction indeed.